Welcome ladies and gentlemen to 14.1 which is entitled uh, Periodic Motion and today we're going to focus on springs. Even though uh, it's springs and pendulums, I'm going to break 14.1 into two different videos so we can just take them a little slower and not spend as much time on each one. So springs, uh, you're all pro probably pretty familiar with springs and how they work. Um, springs provide a restoring force. So if you take a spring and you stretch it, it wants to pull back. And if you squeeze it, it wants to push you the other way. So there's this what's called um, its resting position. If you pull it past its resting position, it wants to go return. If you pull it above it, it wants to go back to. So that's what springs are. And they obey what's called Hooke's Law. And you can figure out potential energy. Hooke's Law states that, that the more you stretch a string, the more force. And it's a linear relationship that force is equal to some constant k times x the distance. k stands for what's called the spring constant. The bigger the, the number k, the stiffer the spring is. So if you have a very large spring constant, it's a really stiff spring that's hard, really slow, and it's a really easy spring to go back and forth. So I, I found a couple of um, interesting videos, or not videos, more like, um, well, it's just kind of a website here to show you about springs. So here's the first little thing that I, you could take these springs off, drop them on the ground, hang them on there, and you can let them go, and they bob. So first of all, I want to kind of show you the spring constant K. So here, these, all these springs are set up to be exactly identical. Spring one, spring two, spring three. So I've got this line set up here, and this is at zero right now. And when I put 50 grams on it, you'll see that it stretches to five centimeters. So Hooke's law states that if you double the amount of force, that means you're going to double the amount of spring stretch. So I, here I've got 100 grams on here, and I should stretch it to 10, just like that. So if I hung 250 on there, um, I think I would stretch it to 25, so we can hang that on there. So right there, see the top of the spring? 25. Kind of obeying Hooke's law. Now, uh, some things to do with springs. So when you, when you pull a string, spring, there's a restoring force that wants to pull it back up and you let it go like this, restores back to where it was. Now, if there's a lot of friction, if there's less friction, you'll notice the thing bobs for a lot longer before it goes back to its neutral position. And then if there's no friction whatsoever, this thing will bob forever. You pull this thing down and it won't ever stop. But that's not true, you know, nothing ever has no friction in it. Kind of the other thing I wanted to maybe show you was this show of energy. So number three, I can show how much energy is, going, is here. Pull this down, and the farther I pull it, you'll notice that the total energy, I'm giving it more and more potential energy from the spring. See this big, this big, tall, only blue line? and then this potential energy from gravity. As long as I'm above the surface of the Earth, there's always some potential energy stored from gravity. So I'm pulling this down, and then I let this thing go. And here's what I want you to notice. I slow this down to a quarter time. That the total energy always stays the same. But what happens is I fluctuate between potential gra gravity energy, kinetic energy, and the spring. So when this thing Let's see if I can grab it at the, at the top. When it's all the way at the top, I don't have any kinetic energy because it stops momentarily. But I've got tons of potential gravitational energy. And there's also some energy stored up in that compressed spring. So all these energies add up to basically say energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's just simply translating between things. Now, if I were to add friction into this mix, you'll see that it manifests itself as heat. So if I have friction, you'll see thermal energy going down. As this thing finally comes to rest, all that energy gets translated into both thermal and the spring is stretched, and I've got some gravitational. So some of the energy left the system through heat. Uh, the final thing I kind of wanted to show you, I'll take away this, is what if, what if I was on, let's say, the moon? I have all these things right now on planet Earth. If What if gravity wasn't as strong, if gravity wasn't pulling down as much? You'll see that the springs aren't being pulled. Those masses aren't being pulled. Now, if, what if I was on Jupiter where there's tons of gravity? 
you'll see these things get pulled down even further. And then lastly, what if there was no gravity? These things would all go back up, resting at neutral, because there is no pull. These things, hundred, these gram masses are no longer being pulled down whatsoever. So just kind of cool stuff. I'll put a link to this if you want to play around and you know, on your own. Uh, the last part about springs that I wanted to talk about today was this example problem. <clears throat> it says the spring constant energy in a spring. A spring stretches by 18 centimeters when a bag of potatoes weighing 56 newtons is suspended from it. So here's my spring normally, but then when I hang potatoes on it, it stretches 18 centimeters, 0 0.18 meters. And this is 56 newtons. The question is, what's the spring constant? The spring constant from that equation Hooke's law, F equals negative kx. This negative is really, it, 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 it's just telling you the direction, that the force is always opposite the way you push it. So if I pull down, so this is, becomes a positive number, then the force is going to restore it. If I, if I compress it, so the force would be maybe negative, then the force is going to be the negative negative, which becomes positive. So the, the negative is really kind of superfluous. Uh, it's just there to tell you that the force will always be opposite of the distance that you're pulling it. So we're putting a force of 56 newtons on this thing. <clears throat> and I'm pulling it 0 0.18 meters. So if I take 56 and I divide by 0 0.18, I end up with 310. So the spring constant here, K, is 310. Now this is newtons and this is meters. So this becomes newtons per meter. And if you think about it with a spring, what this is saying is it takes 310 newtons to stretch this thing one meter. And you'll notice that a larger K, like 500, it would take 500 newtons to stretch it one meter. So this is kind of an example using Hooke's Law, part A. Part B says, what's the elastic potential energy in this? You can use that equation that uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. PE 1 half KX squared. So we're going to apply that equation right here, that the potential energy equals 1 half uh, kx squared. So 1 half the spring constant, which we just found, 310x, um, the distance that we're stretching it, 0 0.18 squared. So I run that through my calculator, 0 0.5 times 310 times 0.18 squared, 5.0. Now that's joules, energy. So I'm storing 5 joules in this. You know, and I have to exert energy to do that, so it's not like this is getting it from nowhere. You know, it takes me, and there's gravity that's pulling down on this maybe too, so uh, that's where that energy comes from. So we'll, we'll continue on with... Um, pendulums in the next part of it, but just wanted to give you an introduction to springs, and uh, your book has a really interesting little picture here to just talk about the restoring forces that go on inside of a uh, spring. When, it, when this thing is resting, you'll notice that there's, you know, gravity pulls it down, the spring pulls it up. These are equal and opposite, so that there, there is no acceleration. So here, when you pull it down, you're grabbing it. You pull down, the spring pulls back, and there's, again, no acceleration. But the moment you let go of it, that restoring force is bigger than gravity. So that's why you have acceleration in this direction. When it's right here, they're equal and opposite, so there's no acceleration. And then when you're above it, the spring is pushing you down, so you accelerate down. So as this thing bobs up and down, there's accelerations in, in different directions and different amounts throughout the phases of its what's called periodic motion. Periodic meaning that it repeats itself in, over a certain period.